Good morning, everybody. Before I really get started for the day here, I just wanted to explain all these lab photos that we've gotten so far. Uh, we did get that follow-up where we had cut into the part now at the lab and we're looking at it from the side. So I just wanted to explain everything we've learned so far. So uh, coming right in here, we're going to look at a couple parts and some of these photos. So uh, as you can see in earlier videos, I've been sending some samples out to different labs uh, where they had a just a mark on them look like that, uh, just in that area and some different spots on blades. But uh, as you look closer at what looks like a crack now under the higher level of uh, microscopy here, you can see that this is very much a delamination situation. So this is gonna tie into the other voids and things that I was showing in other videos and photos. But as you zoom in closer and closer on this, you can see how wide this is across here. It's, I mean, it's the thickness of a daggone blade uh, in width. But I know based on previous observations that they're really long. So as we come back in here closer, you can see we're at the edge of one of these delamination situations, which this sample had made it through to finishing. So whatever the soft material was here, it just delaminated and left this hard edge uh, where it's just kind of crumbling uh, right at the edge as the composition changes leading into whatever this is. And if you come across here, you can see that's basically what's going on across the surface there. Uh, that's images of different regions of that. And as you get into the middle of the anomaly, it's a bit thicker and deeper. So, uh, you know, that's very much not cracking as you get under the microscope there. And that's an even closer look at one of those areas where it's just like a ledge. And then again, the softer material left. So uh, after I made that original video, we got a follow-up photo from the lab here where they cut into a part. And I just want to explain what we're looking at here because all this ragged edge here is just kind of sandwiched into the material. So what happened here is with these early images, we were looking at the surface right around the anomaly and in that region on the surface. So after completing their uh, investigation of that area, just to see what that was looking like, what they did was bisected that where it was visible and cut it in half, which we knew there was probably gonna be a longer anomaly in there just based on previous observations on the surface grinder. So basically what we're looking at in this image is this. So what they did is cut the anomaly in half, cut the part, and then we're looking in at the part from this side. So when you see a thin line coming across here, it's just what you can see from the side. After they've cut into the interior of the part, you can see the bevel leading up to the anomaly where it would have broken off uh, out of the surface way over here. And then God knows how far it goes into the part on the other side. So uh, when you're looking at this from the top, uh, it's kind of a irregular football shape. But then as you get at it from the side, you can see that it's just one thin pocket of whatever that is. I believe it just got sandwiched out and kind of rolled in there like uh, when you're rolling out dough baking. Uh, so whatever that is, uh, that's a better look at what that is from the side, just looking at it from the interior of the part. So I hope that clears up any questions about the images we're looking at so far, but- I have a question. <clears throat> sure. Is that like an air pocket or is it a different type of material? It's some sort of material in there. So what's gonna happen now that they've gotten into this, they're gonna zoom in really close like they did here and start inspecting that to see compositionally exactly what that is. But it's really, really soft and it's poorly bonded. And before heat treat, if I break into it on the surface grinder, just up on the flats, uh, it's just this kind of light gray, leadish, looking stuff and it's just it's poorly bonded and then after heat treat it darkens up a little bit which you see it just looking it's a higher contrast there uh, so whatever oxidized during the heat treat uh, within that it just darkens up but then you can see it in my finish grinding as well as we broke into that and bevel grinding uh, different stages uh, before finishing but then in finishing that's just our last chance if there is anything soft it'll just tear out because it's not hard like the rest of the alloy. But uh, again, people ask why other companies aren't seeing it. Uh, a lot of finish methods will not make stuff like that obvious. Uh, if you're just gonna throw these in a tumbler or something like that, it just grinds at it and you don't necessarily see all that till later under use and weather gets at it, uh, it'll just come out. 
and some people have said that they have been seeing it. Yeah, and that's they, another thing. Is they just are, now that folks are knowing what they're looking for, you are seeing it on some of these parts from different makers where it's a high volume shop or that's just an acceptable standard. Where that bothers me is how wide it is in the different instances, but then I know just looking at it from the surface grinder, how daggone long some of these anomalies can be. And then knowing that it's just a poorly bonded pocket of stuff, uh, that could cause a failure. And that's not acceptable. You know, we've been seeing this up to, uh, I think about around 20% is what we've been averaging on what we can see visually. But then looking at it, there's always a chance that it's somewhere else in the part that I just can't see. You know, I'm only seeing what I grind down to and how I intersect at the bevels, but you don't know what else is hiding inside these parts. And that's, if I can see 20-ish percent visually, then that's that's screaming like red flags to me that there's something else going on with the, in the sheet. So. But we are still gonna cover any knives we send out with our yeah. warranty. <laughs> Anything that'll let out of the shop, we've done a lot of testing. I feel good about offering our lifetime warranty, but that's again where We'll put the factory second two on there so we have higher traceability on those parts. Uh, I feel good about them, but I don't. I never know what's going on inside the part, and I can't know. So that's where it's been my position when I started seeing these things that I would prefer to just take all the parts back and trade those in for new material or get a refund to get some other kind of material. Uh, because if it's 20 couple percent that I can see, I know there's stuff that I'm not seeing, and that's that's alarming to me. I don't want to see like what I can get out the door. It, you know, if there's something wrong, I don't want to do that to you guys. So, uh, but if you ever do have an issue, just let us know. Of course, of course. Yeah, we offer a lifetime warranty. So, uh, if that crops up that's bothering you, causes a failure, uh, we're going to talk about it and you're going to get a different knife. So, I hope that explains what's going on and our quality commitment and why that was kind of a big deal for us. Uh, we will put some links and some photos around in here just to further explain this, but. This is alarming, and I, I'm hoping more and more people who've reached out actually start talking about this publicly because we've got information now. Uh, it's just down to knowing compositionally what that is, and we're gonna find that out real soon. To expose a darker void surface under there. Uh, this is just a kind of a foily situation on top here.